So first, the introduction of the event. So Robot Tour uh, is a trial event, which would much likely be a real event in the 2022 to 2023 season. Due to COVID, uh, it's like pushed back a year. So, but it's probably going to be a real event pretty soon. And the official description is like team design, build, program, and test one robotic vehicle to follow track lines to reach a target at a set amount of time as accurately and as efficiently as possible. So you can have a team of two people and you have a total of 12 minutes to program and adjust the code or robot if necessary. Uh, that is excluding the runtime. And you, uh, you can have like three gates for regionals, four for states and up to six for nationals. So gates are like um, bonuses. So when you pass a gate, you gain like 30 bonus points. So you definitely want to pass as many gate bonuses as, you, uh, as possible. And the competition ends when two successful runs or three failed runs occur, uh, which happens happens first. Uh, the order doesn't matter. Um, last year, it was like uh, four failed runs because we were just starting the event and the event supervisor wanted to give us more chance. But this year, I think uh, they will stick to three failed runs. So better be prepared to that. And your main goal is to pass as many gates as possible so you can get as many gate bonuses as possible. And at the same point, um, you should keep your run time uh, close to the target time. Target time is the time that the event supervisor think it should take your robot to finish the entire run. And you should also get as close to the target point, uh, which is also called the end point or finishing line. Um, technically, it's not a line. It's like a point on the robot track, but it's just an end point. And, and there's also a time bonus. Oh yeah, there's a time bonus if you finish under eight minutes, I think. Okay, so topic topics covered. So you have to cover building and modeling in 3D printing. Depends if you whether you th use a 3D printer or not to print out the customized part for your robot. And we also cover circuits and electronics, coding, computer science, robotics and some basic math skills and calculations for you to calculate speed and uh, distance for the robots. Okay, so some tips for studying and building. So obviously the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're going to read the rules and then you want to learn how um, circuits work. You don't need to know a ton about this, but you do want to generally know what's going on for your robot, especially if you're building with less of a kit. So if you're building straight from Arduino, you're definitely going to want to know what you're building. And then you're going to, then you go ahead and choose what robot or language you want to work with. So if you want to work with Arduino, or if you want to work with Lego Mindstorms, which both have their own advantages and disadvantages that I'm not going to get into. And then from there, you start to learn how to code with your robot, which you can just start with lighting up an LED, you can control a motor or a servo motor, you can get input from sensors, and then eventually you want to get to more advanced stuff. So use logic, um, create different things in order to turn your robot, get it going straight, find a way to follow the lines or the pattern. Then you want to print out the actual track either on printer paper or get a fancy version that's just one sheet. And from there, you get input values for your sensors and start writing the code so that you can actually follow the track. And then from there, you put all the skills that you've done together in order to make it work together as a cohesive robot. And as the slide says, you don't have to go too fast. You can take your time and don't get too frustrated when it doesn't work out. Anything can happen and competition is difficult and learn from your experiences. Oh yeah, I want also, I also want to add to that, like uh, for the writing code part, you don't have to, you don't need to write code from scratch. There's like lots of example and online resources. So when you, for example, when you use Arduino IDE, uh, they have built-in libraries or you can download libraries from online, like uh, GitHub or something. So you can just take someone's already, um, some already existed code and put it in your program and modify it too. 
make a best use. If you spend 80% of your time online and 20% of your time actually coding, that wouldn't be surprising. You have to gather a lot in order to learn what you're doing, unless you already know exactly how to make your robot run. Yep. Oh, I forgot to refresh the slides. Are we on there? Okay, important stuff. So some of the things that are in the rules, you can bring a non-programmable scientific calculator in order to calculate your times or whatever else you want to use it for. Um, you only need to impound the, it doesn't need to be a scientific calculator. It's going to be just non-graphing. Um, but any non-programmable non-graphing calculator works. You only need to impound the USB drive that contains the program. You don't need to impound your entire laptop. In fact, you aren't supposed to impound your entire laptop. So you would impound the USB drive and then pull it up in front of the event supervisor at the competition in order to edit your program. But that's the only thing you can access on your computer. Your batteries must be impounded separately from your device, similar to battery buggy if anybody did that. Um, you have to wait until the event supervisor says that you can put your batteries in your device in order to do so. You also should not do like a practice run on a surface other than the track. So if it's actually moving elsewhere, that's an issue. If the wheels start turning accidentally, that's a different thing, but don't make, don't make the event supervisor think is what something I like to say. So don't, otherwise you'll get a failed run. That's true. Mm -hmm. For competitions. So um, you should always do your logs. Logs are like free points. So if you don't do your logs, you're going to get a great disadvantage from your competition. And you should always have your partner to double check your code to prevent simple mistakes. For example, I remember my first Robot Tour Invitational. Um, I was supposed to put like 30 in the code. But I put um, 3,030, which messed up the whole thing. And I checked like three times and I didn't realize that simple mistake. So you guys should always like double check your code before each run. And if I recall, yeah. I you off there, but if I recall, I was like, check the code. You were like, no, it's not the code, it's the robot. And I was like, check the code. You were like, no, it's not the code, it's the robot. And then you checked the code, you didn't see it. And then, at the end there, you actually saw it, so. Yeah, me and Lindsay are, were actually robot tour partners last year, so. And you should not touch the robot or remove it from the track unless the event supervisor tell you to do so. This is very important. If you remove your robot from the track or touch it like before the event supervisor tell you to do so, they might not be finished measuring all the measurements they need to need, for example, time, distance from the target point and all the gate bonuses. So if you like remove it from the track, even if you have a good run, I don't think it'll be like qualified. So just rem remember, don't touch or do anything to a robot unless your event supervisor tell you to do so. And you should make sure that your robot is stable and nothing <laughs> fell apart during the event. So again, my first invitational, Lindsay helped me to put the batteries in but she forgot to put like put it up there. So for the first run, the batteries like hang on the ground all the time. So yeah, you guys should always make sure nothing fell apart from your robot. And so you should always do your calculations on a scrap paper. It will really help you to determine like how fast you should let your robot run and all that statistics and how much time you're supposed to take. Lindsay, do you have something to say? Oh, I was just saying I deny all responsibility. <laughs> okay. And uh, last but not least, um, so just don't get too nervous. Uh, it's just a trial event, so have fun. It's like um, it won't affect your team's overall placement or you can also get medals. So it's a pretty good and fun event. That's all for our presentation. So do you guys have any questions? We're gonna wait for like two minutes. If you guys have any questions. Oh yeah, there's a 
previous answer. It's like, what is Roblox Tour? Uh, I hopefully I explained it well, but if you don't still want to understand anything, I could further explain it if you want to. If there aren't any questions, then we will end in a minute or so. So ask now. Well, the chat. Since then, we got a question. Oh, there is a question. So, for the target time, is it the same for all teams that won competition? Um. So basically, the target time. Uh, if we're using the same track, uh, the target time is always the same. But um, there's some invitationals, like some big ones, where you can use like um, there's gonna be up to like three different tracks. So of course the event supervisor is going to have different um, target time for different tracks, but not different teams based on the robot. Yeah, that did happen. Did that happen at Menor? I think it happened at uh, Solon, I think. It uh, might have. Yeah, I think they had like three tracks, but they only used one. So there's only one target time that time. But yeah, they used different targets and different tracks. And I think there was an FAQ about it and they said that that was. Yeah. 